Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode number 396. Breast cancer risk is higher in women with low muscle mass and high percent body fat. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. So now that we've put the fear of estrogen to bed, because now all of the research says, well, estrogen doesn't cause breast cancer. It basically protects you in many ways from getting, getting advanced breast cancer or getting um, highly um, aggressive breast cancer. So now we, we know that's not really a risk, then what is? So now they're researching different things that can put women at risk for breast cancer, and they found that obesity is one of the risks, and they also found that low muscle mass, usually many women who have obesity have low muscle mass, but low muscle mass independent of obesity is also a risk for getting breast cancer and getting more severe advanced breast cancer than women who have good muscle mass and normal weight. So, so are, you, are you saying then causatively that mm-hmm. if you are fat, it can cause breast cancer or it can cause that not to be detected in, in a, a safe time frame, a, a more treatable time That's frame? That's a really good um, comparison because, first of all, being obese makes it harder for the radiologist to see a breast cancer, an early breast cancer, a small breast cancer. They have to look through more tissue and there's more distortion even in 3D mammograms, which I would always suggest that you get a 3D mammogram. It's more specific, and it can cut through some of that. However, obesity makes it harder to detect that way, but it's also harder to detect by just palpating. When your doctor does a breast exam, they're using their hands or fingers to feel for a breast cancer. It's easier to miss it if you have really large pendulous breasts because there's so much tissue to have to feel through. And it's also harder for you to detect your own breast cancer if, you're, if you have lots of fat over your breasts. So it's an it's a anatomic problem for detection, but it's also a problem in that we're obese for many reasons, but we, also, we always gain weight after menopause. So as estrogen drops, as testosterone drops, we gain weight. We become more insulin resistant. We become more sensitive to carbohydrates, and most women gain weight after menopause. Therefore, that weight gain has to do with dropping hormone levels. Right. And that seems to be causative. Low testosterone seems to be causative for breast cancer, not high testosterone, low. Right. So testosterone is a really interesting hormone. It stimulates your immune system. Right. So when... Cancer is really an immunity problem. When your immune system drops, then your, your um, surveillance system for cancer cells decreases in activity, and you may miss one of those cells, and they may, may go on to grow and become cancer. Mm-hmm. Because of that, testos- testosterone is a good defense against breast cancer, and when we're young, we have lots of it, and as we get older, we have very little of it, especially after menopause. So one of the mechanisms of these studies is that testosterone drops, muscle mass drops, fat goes up, all of those things happen at the same time. And what they're finding is that breast cancers are more aggressive and more frequent in people who have low hormone levels and high testosterone, excuse me, high um, obesity and low muscle mass. So are you saying then that uh, breast cancer at all? is just more common in women uh, after menopause than it is prior to menopause. You can have it, you can get it mm-hmm. when you're younger, mm-hmm. but the the numbers increase dramatically mm-hmm. after menopause. Yes, they increase with age and, and dramatically after menopause. And, and that for those women 
who naturally gain weight as they've gone through menopause mm -hmm. and have not replaced their hormones. Mm -hmm. They're more likely to get heavier. And if they reach the level of obesity, they're more likely to mask the existence of the cancer because right. of the size of mm -hmm. the fat tissues mm -hmm. in their breasts and in their body in general. Mm -hmm. But they're also more likely to have actually have a more aggressive breast cancer. There have been several studies. I mean, there's lots of studies before this. I'm glad you got that out of the question I asked. That's what I wanted to know. Right. Yeah. Right. They're more likely to have more aggressive uh, breast cancers if they're obese. Yes. So not just that it's late in find a late detection because we okay. can't we can't get through the the large breast to maybe detect it. Yeah. But it is also because they have a more aggressive type of breast cancer. It's opposite of what we were always t taught. Right. Estrogen, it used to be that estrogen and we're all terrified of that. All I mean, hormones cause doing. breast cancer. Now we know that it doesn't. Right. Now, sometimes estrogen can feed a breast cancer if it changes and has estrogen receptors. Right. So that's why we don't give estrogen after breast cancer is formed. But that's not always the case. In fact, that's not often the case. I mean, in our in this, we're looking at breast cancers that are more aggressive if they are not fed by hormones, estrogen or testosterone. So if you've never taken hormones, your chance of getting an aggressive breast cancer is high. If you've taken hormones and hormone replacement, it's actually lower than the people who take nothing. So you're talking about estrogen. You're repeating that a lot. But one of the things that you also want to say is that testosterone benefits because it leads to an increase in muscle mass. Right. Women that have better musculature mm -hmm. and stronger muscles mm -hmm. throughout their body are also less likely to develop breast cancer. Am I understanding that Yes, correctly? you are. And less likely to have an aggressive breast cancer. So in the study, they don't talk about testosterone. They just talk about muscle. However, if you're over 50 and you've tried to make muscle by going to the gym and without having any added testosterone, you can work then out forever. You can yeah. work out forever, and you're not going to make more muscle. You right. need testosterone to make muscle. So, ergo, <laughs> you need testosterone to have a good muscle mass after you've gone through menopause, and that gives you less a, a lower rate of breast cancer and less aggressive breast cancer. So, this is one of those things that medicine and science have learned over time, mm -hmm. because if you go back 25, 30 mm -hmm. years. And you say, well, how about testosterone or estrogen replacement? Mm -hmm. is, this a, is this a thing that we all 30 years ago, doing? they said it's not even a women's hormone. <laughs> testosterone. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and then they said, oh, well, we can't do that because it causes cancer. Right. About both hormones. Mm -hmm. Now they're saying that there is no research that shows testosterone causes cancer. Mm -hmm. But right. there's In, a lot women. of research that say if you replace your testosterone, you reduce your risk of all cause death other, yes. other than accidents. Right. You know, all health related. All cause All deaths. cause. Of which breast cancer can one be one. So you reduce your risk. And the testosterone piece of that is because it helps you grow muscles, mm -hmm. uh, be at an age when you normally are losing mm -hmm. muscles. So it gives you that capacity to defend yourself. Exactly right. And, so, and then the estrogen added with the testosterone helps you together. They both help you with musculature and weight control right? so that you can fight obesity because obesity is the killer. Obesity mm -hmm. is the trigger event for diabetes related mm -hmm. deaths, heart disease, heart disease related deaths, cancer related deaths is what we're learning. Yes. The, the, the bigger risk is to look in the mirror and say, I'm obese, and, and they, they, they keep trying and to... And actually then do something about it. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> because it's knowing you're obese doesn't help. Knowing you, that you're overweight doesn't help. And the longer you're over your ideal weight, the more you get used to it, and the more you go, oh, that's not so bad, you know, and then... but Another, but if, another notch in the belt. Right. If, yeah. you're, if you're increasing your belt size, or if you're increasing your dress size, or, or your clothing size... You should, you should actually, I mean, the biggest thing you can do for yourself is to lose weight and become ide at, be your, at your ideal weight for your height and build muscle. Those are the two best things that you can do. Now, after menopause, it's really hard to do that. It's like uphill, trying to push a cart uphill instead of downhill when you don't have any hormones. When you have testosterone and estradiol, it is much easier for you to lose weight, become not obese, and to make more muscle mass. Now, why does muscle help us 
become slender? Well, the biggest uh, calorie burner in your body is muscle. So if you have lots of muscle, you can be sleeping and burn more calories than people who have very little muscle. And they do all their work all day long, and they're still not burning much calorie or many calories. And it's a risk when you live a sedentary lifestyle. Right. You know, if you're, if you're watching too much television, if you're sitting all day at work, if you're sitting mm-hmm. all day at home, and then you're eating, you go out to eat a lot, you eat a lot of prepared foods, uh, you're eating the wrong stuff. Mm-hmm. That leads to Junk high food. sugar consumption. Mm-hmm. So, so you get in this vicious cycle with weight gain and diabetes that mm-hmm. leads to heart issues. And, you know, we, those are also killers that are of concern. People always come in and say, why does this happen to me now? You yeah. know, now that I'm 50 or some over 50. Just get my life in place. Yeah. And I, now I have this issue. Now, I've never really been very active. And I've ne- well, you have to try harder after 50. Sorry. It's, I mean, you do. You have to work harder at being healthy than you did when you were 35. It's like when you were 35, you were, um, you were putting money in the bank, and now you're taking it out. So basically, it's, it, you have to take it out to – you have to work harder at it. And, and we've done a couple of, of health casts on people drinking sodas excessively. Mm-hmm. You, know, you, you go into – like a quick trip or something, and you mm-hmm. see these people come out with quart or half gallon jugs of, of soda, mm-hmm. diet soda straight or regular sugar. soda. Straight sugar it, for the real soda. It's just not good for you. So the reason diet soda is not so good for you is because it actually has sweeteners in it and, um, and preservatives that stimulate your insulin and make you more insulin resistant. So it's not that they have true calories, but they're making your insulin overreact. And when insulin overreacts, it makes fat. So you get tired. It takes away your energy. It takes away your blood sugar for energy, and it makes fat. So, so, more, you, so you may have to change some of your habits, yeah. the, the way that you eat, the way that you are sedentary, the, the kind of exercise that you do. You can't pick up a magazine uh, or, or read a news feed on, on the Internet mm-hmm. that doesn't talk about different way you know what's the optimal type of exercise what's the amount that's required to do you any good do you need to get your heartbeat up for 20 minutes or does it help if you have 10 minutes and and they all all the experts disagree and everybody's written a book about it (laughs) the main thing is you have to move you have to get up and move Mm -hmm. when it's possible for you to do so climb a flight of stairs don't ride an elevator Mm -hmm. the more regularly you can condition yourself to do that the better off you are if you live a block from the grocery store Walk to the store mm-hmm. once in a while. Don't don't get in a car and drive. Uh, I know people that drive to their mailbox <laughs> to to get their mail. And wow! It's I, that's, I, unless you're living on a they, farm. That's, that's they can't walk. I mean, uh, well, and especially and that, when they get know, obese and their knee problems, back problems that they've developed over a lifetime. And so now they will focus on, I need to have my knees replaced. Instead of, I need instead to lose, of, I need weight, to lose weight. And they put new knees in the same fat, and then they're... There's, a, there's, a, there's also, in these same, um, in these same journals, I, there's a lot of discussion about, should we replace knees in people who won't lose weight? Right. Because yeah. why spend all that money? Why spend all that money to replace a knee that you're just going to... You're going to just... Get need new need new knee replacements in another five years because you can't lose weight. So so it's it's a huge issue. It does change. I mean, the problem with after fifty and not having your hormones is it makes it a lot harder to get where you want to go. It'd be best if we all got to a normal weight before that. But but it makes it a lot harder to actually lose weight. So the foundation for getting healthier is more muscle mass. To burn calories, so that's testosterone, and more estrogen, so we don't get in- insulin resistance as we go through menopause for women, and then then look at our lifestyle, then look at our exercise habits. But basically, you just have to exercise every day. Everybody has should exercise every day. That's it. And Mediterranean diet is so easy. All it is is fresh food. Eat one or two salads every day. Eat. Don't eat fried food. Don't eat fast food. Eat. Food you have to cook or raw food. I mean, I, and Mediterranean diet has fish and meat. So there's no, it's not like it's restricting that or <laughs> eggs or oil, olive oil. You just have to eat fresh. I'm laughing because I met some friends for lunch yesterday. We went to this restaurant where the specialty was a sandwich that was breaded and fried. 
And Ugh. then cheese was put on it. And uh, then <laughs> okay, they had well this, that's out. Oh, hang on. Then they have this <laughs> you specialty didn't eat that, sauce. Did you? No, no. But they had this specialty sauce and the bun. And then with that, they had steamed broccoli. And I started <laughs> laughing. And the, and the waiter was like, "Why are you laughing?" Take I said, away your guilt. The steam, the steam broccoli is the healthy piece of that, you uh -huh. know, so it makes the rest of it okay. And he started laughing and said, no. <laughs> Did you see any thin people in the restaurant? Uh, <laughs> or normal weight people? I don't mean thin. I, I, no. No, it, it was uh, what my wife calls a hog jowl place where people that go and... It, uh, what was the Disney movie where everybody was so fat they rode around in motorized chairs? Oh, Emo, I, I don't know. Evo, Evo. I think you have a younger of, child than I do. I do have a younger child, so I don't. I don't know that. <laughs> yeah. Although one of the things I learned about Disney movies years ago is you don't have to have kids to enjoy them. You can go and, yeah. and you know, say, uh, "They have like, multiple layers of interest." Multiple layers, but there was a movie where everybody was so automated and fat, and they they lived in this spaceship, and they never interacted personally. It was all on video screens and and text machines, mm -hmm. and food was just delivered to them that was not you know by the machines. And they didn't do anything. So, so just think about what we were made for. We were made to have food be not, not fuel. Yeah, to to have to work for our food, to have mm -hmm. to find it, to have to spend hours cooking it. And we were we were made for that. And we were made for not cars. We were made to walk, and we were made to go out and use our bodies to survive. And then now we're so intelligent that we've ruined our lifestyle and made ourselves sick because we don't have to go out and do anything. We can sit at home with our with our video games or we can watch television or we can read a book. I mean, none of those things are bad in itself. It just keeps us from moving around. Yeah. So now we've we've gotten so smart that we've made our lives easier. Food is easy to find, easy to cook, and it's easy to just sit and do nothing. So we've made ourselves sick. We weren't meant for this. Yeah. So the, the issue with breast cancer is such an important one to women, but when you say you must cut out big gulps, you must cut out right. straight sugar, candy, baked goods, and, and that's a hard, that's a hard um, order to swallow for most people who are obese and who are at high risk for breast cancer. So... When you tell them that, you've taken away – it's like I took their best friend away. Well, but, if you're not at death's door, it isn't a you must cut, all, a cut out. It's not an all or nothing. You can gradually make these changes. You can reduce certain things like, like give up eating white bread or give up eating sugared desserts or prepared foods, fast foods. It doesn't last very long. No. They, they try to do it, and then it doesn't last very long because Well, the, the issue becomes the, the issue that's involved with dieting. You can't diet your way to good health. You have to change your lifestyle. You can diet your way to lose 10 or 15 pounds. Mm -hmm. Then the minute you reach that goal, you start putting it back on. And, and usually people put extra back on because they're making up for the deprivation that they suffered while they were dieting. Yeah. So it's got to be about changing your lifestyle. And what we're trying to say is that there is literally survival value in assessing your weight level and, and your obesity issues. If you are obese or nearly obese, have alarm bells go off. Do something about it because it can save your life in so many ways, not the least of which for women is the issue of breast cancer. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.